Which tank should I pick? Is there a really difference in damage or abilities? What are the job skills? Should I even tank in Final Fantasy XIV? If you've asked yourself any of these questions, then this is the video for you. Hey guys, my name is Stefan Ash and I have another Final Fantasy guide for you. Today I'll be doing a tank comparison guide where I show you the differences in each of the four tanks. This is not a damage guide or a rotation guide, just the differences between the jobs so you can make the best decision on which tank you should play next. I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to my new Patreon supporter, Not Pete, who obtained the Sprout Captain title. Congrats and thank you so much for supporting the channel. If you like this type of comparison video, then consider checking out my already created melee, range, and caster comparisons too. If you get any value out of this video, then make sure to limit break 3 that subscribe button down below. Let's jump in. There are four tanks that we have currently, Paladin, Warrior, Dark Knight, and Gunbreaker. There are distinct differences between each of them and they each have their own job specific skills as well as share some similar guidelines. For those who've been around for a little while, you know I already have practical healing guides for each healer on my channel already. If you want to see some practical tanking guides for each class, then comment down below and let me know. Let's first go over job specifics and then we'll cover the similarities of certain actions of each tank. There will also be a short discussion of main tanking and off tanking when in content that has two tanks. I will say this up front and fight me in the comment section, but as you tank, you need to be keeping aggro and using mitigation. It is literally your job role. The great thing about this is you can also be DPSing at the same time. Use your cooldowns. First up is Paladin. Unlocked at level 1, Paladin or their beginning class Gladiator starts in Ulda. Right off the bat, the difference is that Paladin is the only tank with an actual shield funnily enough. This gives a lot of value to the actual aesthetic of the class. Some players do choose jobs, me one of them, because of the aesthetic so if you want that classic tank feel then Paladin is right up your alley. Paladin's job specific skill is Oath Mastery. You have an Oath Gauge that increases by 5 every time an auto attack lands. You also have quite a few skills to spend your Oath Gauge on. These skills are heavily veered towards protecting your allies and yourself from incoming damage. The job specific skill really makes you feel like a traditional tank with tons of tanking cooldowns, really Paladin-esque like damage abilities like Holy Spirit and Holy Circle for some MP damage abilities as well, and just all around a balanced set of skills. Next up is Warrior. Unlock the level 1 and beginning class Marauder, which you unlock in Limsa Lominza. Wielding a mighty axe and boasting some major self heals and some really amazing damage abilities, Warrior is a beast. Literally, the job specific skill is called Beast Gauge, which gives you access to the almighty Beast Gauge ability and still Cyclone, which keeps getting upgrades to more powerful abilities later on. Warrior just feels like a ravaged Cyclone with an axe while having the most insane sustainability. Thrill of Battle, which increases your HP by 20%, Shake It Off ability giving everyone a 15% shield of their max HP, and Nascent or Nascent, I can't really pronounce that, Flash, which is like a beefed up bloodbath for DPS, which heals you for the portion of damage dealt. Honestly, at times, the warrior feels so overpowered with these amazing skills. Third up, Dark Knight. Unlocked at level 30 in Heaven's Ward, Dark Knight is everything it says and more. Your job specific ability is Blood Gauge, which is the amount of black blood a Dark Knight has accumulated. The job abilities really align with the aesthetic of the job with their abilities. You got Flood of Darkness, Blood Weapon, and Edge of Darkness. You also have Blackest Knight, which is one of the most popular and talked about ability between Dark Knights, which is an amazing shield ability that absorbs 25% of your total HP. If the barrier is broken while up, then you pretty much get free MP for more damage abilities. I don't know how they did it, but this job feels like you're swinging a heavy two-handed sword around. Like, the abilities almost feel heavy. I just absolutely love it. On a poll I did on YouTube, Dark Knight actually got the most votes as the favorite tank. Last up, Gunbreaker, the DPS of tanks. I kid, I kid. Unlocked at level 60 near Gridania, Gunbreaker is hailed as the fun tank of the group. Don't yell at me, yell at the people in the poll I took on YouTube. Not only does it feel very fast paced with tons of damage abilities, but it also has a really cool gunblade. I'm looking at you Squall fans. Your job specific gauge is Powder Gauge, which you obtain a cartridge for either completing a full GCD combo or an AoE combo. 
I'm kind of assuming the favorite of Gunbreaker via the poll is the Gnashing Fang combo and continuation skill. This is where you use a cartridge from your powder gauge, which then gives you access to three devastating skills. Gnashing Fang, 450 potency, Savage Claw, 550 damage potency, and Wicked Talent, 650 potency. But that's not all. You then get an ability later on, Continuation, that you weave in between these three abilities, which gives you Jugular Rip, Abdomen Tear, and Eye Gouge. 260, 280, and 300 potency respectively. Honestly, as you can see, it's just a boatload of damage and fun, and you can enter this combo every 30 seconds. If you want to kill the evil sorceress, <clears throat> I mean be a good warrior of light, then Gumbreaker is for you. This is not a practical tanking guide, but I do want to talk about two abilities that have the absolute same principle no matter which tank you have, and they're just kind of varied for the specific job. This is your pooling ability or range attack to aggro and your oh crap tank button that gives you invulnerability for a time. Each tank has a ranged aggro attack in order to pull bosses to you or an enemy or trash mobs. I won't go on how to pull since I want to include that in the practical tanking guide. These are as follows for each tank. Paladin has Shield Lob. Warrior has Tomahawk. Dark Knight has Unmend. And Gunbreaker has Lightning Shot. Temporary Invulnerability is another one that all tanks have as this is the oh crap button. But when used correctly, you can potentially mitigate huge tank busters. Be aware that some tank busters are meant to not be mitigated. So if you use something like this and you still get damage, just realize that there was nothing you could have done about it anyway. This is also really great for when you pull huge trash mobs and you just want to make it easier on the healer who might be newer to the job or just might need a little help because you pulled a lot. Be aware that these different abilities are used differently as they have slightly different tooltips. Also, it's good to add a macro to ping your healer so that they know that you have used the invulnerability ability. Yes, I'm specifically talking to you, Dark Knights. First up, Paladin has Hollowed Ground, renders you impervious to most attacks for a duration of 10 seconds. This just means that very few special attacks and some content that are not meant to be mitigated. So Hollowed Ground keeps you impervious to attacks no matter when you use it. So in the beginning of a huge trash mob pool or maybe an onslaught of boss attacks. Warrior has Home Gang, prevents your HP from going below one from most attacks. Also chains down your target. So this ability is a little different as it prevents your HP from going below one. This might be better used if you're already very low on HP. Since if you are on full HP and your healer is keeping up your healing, it isn't really going to be as useful. But let's say maybe your healer died, you wait to the very last second and your red mage hopefully very raised your healer to give them enough time to resurrect. I have seen that happen quite a few times and this ability is really great for those sticky situations. The Dark Knight has Living Dead. If your HP hits zero while under the effect of Living Dead for 10 seconds, instead of KOing you get the status effect Walking Dead for 10 seconds. Your HP won't drop below one from most attacks and your healer must heal you to 100% health in order to not be KO'd. This is actually a pretty awesome ability as you get way longer than the other tanks for the oh crap time. I will say add a macro to ping your healer that you popped living dead. Sometimes in the heat of battle they won't see it and won't heal you in time and when I play healer I know I appreciate it. This is really great for white mages as they have benediction that will instantly give you 100% HP back. Last up, Gunbreaker. Now pay attention. You have the ability Super Bolide where you literally punch yourself in the face and are impervious to attacks for 8 seconds. Be careful with this ability, it will reduce your health to 1 and keep you impervious. So you don't want to use this when your health is full or even half, I would say closer to 10 to 20%. So many times I've seen Gunbreakers die because they popped this way too early and the healer didn't see them in time, again because of the heat of battle, and they end up dying. It's really important to understand how to use these abilities in battle because they're not all the same. Let's jump over to main tanking and off tanking. Most of the time you simply can just chat if you want to main tank or off tank. I see all four jobs swap all the time. I will say my experience, Paladin seems to be a better off tank as the job specific abilities are for defense and can be used on the other tank. 
I also see Warrior main tank most of the time as it's more damage oriented and self heal oriented. Comment down below your experience so Sprouts can read through it and figure out what might work for them. I want to do a big thank you for watching my videos and a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters who keep this channel protected from the YouTube algorithm. If you want to consider supporting the channel, you can click on the link tree down below to access all the ways you can do that. You can connect with me on social media as well in the same link. Feel free to comment down below any more video recommendations that you guys would like to see me do. If you want to watch more Final Fantasy tutorials, then you can click here.